This is just like the previous two um, sections, but they're just getting more complicated. I don't think I'm going to worry about uh, steps one, two, and three here in the examples. Um, so let's see here. I will look at the convince me though. Let's take a quick peek at that and I'll pull a stick. It says, is 300 times 10 a good estimate for the number of bagels sold at the bakery? Let's take a quick look. And it says in the bakery, uh, they sold 389 boxes of bagels. How many bagels did the store sell last month? So it's going to be 12, because there's 12 in a box. 12 times 389. Okay, but they're in the convince me. They're just asking about um, a estimate. So it's actually I'm just going to put down 12 times 389, and is that a good est? Is 300 times 10? Is that a good estimate of that? Let's. It should be 400. Yeah, that's what I would have done. I would have done 400 because that's 389 is closer to 400. And then, yeah, times 10. So, um, and so you guys could write uh, the answer is no, comma, 389 is closer to 400 than 300 okay and I think I'd like to think most of you recognize that all right so let's uh, drop down to the guided practice and I'm just gonna do a couple of these here um, let me see number one a theater can seat 400 and, yeah I'm sorry 540 people at one time how many tickets are sold if the theater theater sells out every seat for one 30 day month so let's take a look at that I'm looking at number one right now so it's 540 and that's going to be multiplied by 30 I think most of you can do these but here's some of the mistakes that you make you don't keep things lined up and if you write sloppy this is going to be a common mistake for you. So first off, let's deal with the zero. So what's zero times zero? Zero. zero. What's zero times four? Zero. What's zero times five? Zero. Okay. So done with the zero and the 30. Now we're going to multiply um, three times zero. What's three times zero? zero. Okay, but remember, you have to move in a line whoops try that again you have to move in a space you don't drop it right underneath the very first zero so three times zero is zero three times four is twelve put down the two carry the one three times five is fifteen plus one is 16. Notice how I kept things lined up. And now I just simply add everything up. So the first one I'm looking at, what's 0 plus nothing is 0. 0 plus 0 is 0. 2 plus 0 is 2. And then the 6 and the 1. And now I can just simply put the comma, and we have 16,000. 200 as the answer for number one, 16,200. And then it asks the question for number two. It says, um, is 500 times 30 a good estimate for the number of tickets sold in one month? And explain, I would say yes. Because um, 500 um, is close to 540. If they had 
pick 600, that wouldn't have worked so well. All right. Um, I think you can do three, four, five, six without too much trouble. Let me drop down a little bit further here. Um, I'm going to look at number number sixteen. Number sixteen. So two, two, two times seventy-five. Okay, you guys follow along. So five times two is what? Ten. Put down the zero, carry the one. Five times two is ten again, plus one is eleven. Put down the one, carry the one. Five times two is ten, plus one is eleven. All right, so I'm done with the fives. Now I'll do seven. Set. Remember to move in one space. 7 times 2 is 14. 14. Put down the 4. Carry the 1. 7 times 2 is 14 plus 1 is 15. Carry the 1. 7 times 2 is 14 plus 1 is 15. Notice I'm keeping things lined up. Then you just simply add them together. 0. So I'm just pulling down that 0. And then 4 and 1 is 5. 5 and 1 is 6, 5 and 1 is 6, and 1, and it can over three places. Now, <clears throat> what I want to point out to you guys is that when I multiplied by 5, and I started right here, I started in the 1's place. But when I multiplied by 7, that's the 10's place. So that's why I moved in one. So I start with the tens place. And then if I had multiplied by three digits, then I would have moved in another one. And I would have made sure everything stayed lined up. And then you just add them together. Question? Did it, if we the first question, are we supposed to add tickets? Oh, right, yeah. Thank you. Tickets. Good point. Thank you. Go ahead and put up 10 points for that. All right. Um, let's look at the problem solving. Number one, how many times does a rabbit, rabbit's heart beat in an hour. Well, there's the beats per minute. Okay, how many minutes are in an hour? 60. And it says it right there. You guys can do that one. Number 20, in an hour, how many more times does a rabbit's heart beat than a dog's heart beat? So you're going to compare. And I can tell, rabbit's 212, the dog is 100. So you're simply going to subtract um, the dog. And I'll just put it like this. I'll put rabbit. And you're going to subtract the dog. And you'll get an answer. All right. And then it says write an equation to show your work. Well, that would be the equation. The rabbit's heartbeat. Subtracting the dog's heartbeat. Number 21. Is 3,198 a reasonable product for, in other words, an answer for 727 times 44? Why or why not? Well, I'll let you figure that one out. You're at, you'll actually have to do that. 724 times 44. Number 22. Um, a garden store sells plants in flats. I think you guys know what flats are. They have little plants in them. And you can take them out individually and plant them. Some flats might have six. Some might have a dozen. Some might have 20 or 25. It just depends. So it sells plants and flats. And it says there are six plants in each tray. And each flat has six trays. I'm going to highlight that. 
uh, six plants in each tray. Um, each flat has six trays. And the garden sold 18 flats. On Saturday, and 21 flats on Sunday. So we're talking about two different days here. How many plants did the garden store sell in all? And this one is going to be worth 100 points. On Tuesday, remember there's no school on Monday. So I'll be asking about that one. Now, if you get help at home, that's fine. Make sure you can explain it to me how you did that. Be able to explain. Explain your answer that you get. So if you get it right, that's great. But then I'm going to say, so how did you get that answer? And if you just kind of look at me, well, so I'm assuming then you got it from somebody else because you can't even explain to me how you did the problem. So you won't get the 100 points. So that's 100 points for your group. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. 100 points for your group and mustache jar. What? What? Yep, 100 points and something out of the mustache jar. So... Make sure you do number 22. And, like I said, be able to explain it. All right, number 23. That's 23 here. She's building a rectangular patio. The patio will be 108 bricks wide and 19 bricks long. How many bricks does she need to build a patio? So we're, somebody pointed out this to me the other day. We're, you know, really, we're talking about an area and so here's, here's the patio. Wow, it's 108 bricks and 19 wide. So there's the, the patio. Um, and so I'll just put a 19 here. 19, I'll put a B for bricks and 108 bricks. To figure out the area, Area, I'm going to write this down. I want you to write it down also. Equals length times width. Length times width. That's how you figure out the area. So if you needed to figure out the area of this patio, it's 108 times 19. Um, and then you're going to figure out, once you have 108 times 19, you'll know how many bricks <coughs> does she, that she will need. Okay? And we're assuming all the bricks are the same size. Okay. All right. That's it. Under 15 minutes.